You get it though? No sugar in the spaghetti again? You, wait a minute, sugar and spaghetti. You didn't do that, Ice? You didn't do that. Oh, you did? You put sugar in spaghetti, Ice? Yes. I still put sugar in spaghetti. Okay. 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 Y'all some different okay. kind of Negroes in here. Nah. You do the spaghetti, I mean, the sugar, with my aunts and uh, my mom used to put pepperonis in there, all sorts I, of... I don't know about the pepperonis. Reasonable, reasonable things, not sugar. I don't yeah. understand. There's a reason, though. It cuts the acidity of the tomato. I like the acidity. I, okay, okay. <laughs> The whole technical like reasoning for oh. it. I just thought it tastes good. It she got the whole technical reasoning behind it. It brings out the <laughs> I like more of the tomato. Now, do you guys like bake on top? First of all, he, they make the spaghetti, then they bake it with American cheese. Like, on, thank you. On top of the, of the sugar spaghetti. Mm -mm. I've had that for th one, one or two Thanksgivings. I've had that. A spaghetti casserole, hey, listen, if me, you will. Let me tell you it's something. Wrong. Let me tell you something. My father cooks amazing spaghetti. It's sweet. It's sweet. Spaghetti casserole. It's sweet now. You ain't don't get your body fat checked out. You eat it, but absolutely, it's not good for this time of place. It's bomb though. Fast. But. She she just left, so I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit what I'm about what I'm cooking tonight, Let's right? Do it. It, it's not going. Thankfully, everybody who's watching this is not here and don't have to taste us because we ain't going to hold <laughs> myself to a whole standard. But we got a little pan steak. Tonight, the special is a little pan steak mm. out of a little cast iron skillet. Mm. It's a filet. We got, uh, <laughs> we got some seared scallops. Oh. Mm. A little surf and turf. Mm. And we're going to round that out with a little Brussels sprout. Oh, but, you already lost. Wait, 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 you already lost. You couldn't lost. Baby, you're on my side. I'm scared. <laughs> you're on my side. You already lost. I'm scared. It sounds real good, I'm right? Scared. Are you cooking for the family or what? what I mean, what's up? Everybody eat that? I, I got two fillets here. The kids are, there's too many kids around here. So I, don't, I don't think I got enough food for Oh, everybody. okay. Because I was about to say the kids are telling the truth. Like, no. they don't like it. <laughs> we didn't know right away. Honestly, we ordered Chick fil A. I don't even worry about it. Listen, uh, <laughs> so this is what we're going to do, y'all. We're going to keep having conversations. Me and Steph, we're gonna be cooking, going back and forth, but let's keep having combos and let's just vibe a little bit. All Absolutely. right. Y'all got y'all wine over there? What y'all drinking? We got the wine. So I know you got the way sellers. We got the two domains over here. We got domain the domain curve. curve. We got the uh Savion Blanc. We got the Cabernet Savion. So everybody's yeah. enjoying some some fine wine tonight. <laughs> Yo, so can y'all tell us a little bit about uh y'all entry into the wine business and having yeah. wine? Please let's do talk about it. Yeah. Please, please do so, tell. Do tell. So my sister and I, sister-in-law and I, uh, Sadell actually started this wine um, with our lovely vintner John Schwartz, and we we love Cabernet Sauvignon, and so we and we like a big bold cab. And yeah. So one night at a birthday dinner for his mom. Steph, wash your hands, Steph. Yeah, wash them hands. Twenty seconds. <laughs> one, I'm singing the alphabet right now. <laughs> One night at a birthday dinner for his mom, I said, you know, you're like a big, bold cab. Like, the women in our family are like a big, bold cab, and you're a great representation of that. So we were like, hmm, big, bold cabs. Let's get into it. And so it's, it's, it's luscious. It's very forward. And then our second we came out with was this Sauvignon Blanc, and it's super great, fruity, and floral. We enjoy doing it. We're so close to Napa. It only yeah. makes sense. I'm gonna we gotta, we gotta do a group trip back up to Napa. Yeah, that'd be so much fun. Yeah. I'm gonna lower this chooch. I don't wanna see what. the onions right here, everybody. Yeah. So What's that, what you got? Wait, you, did you, I know you, did you tell oh. everybody what you cooking? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm making pasta over here, man. Pasta, a little, car, a little Cabernet wine, it goes perfect. Wait, wait where'd it go, where'd it go? Hold on, hold on, we will show y'all, hold on. <laughs> How do you, why is it so, so I'm cooking, I'm, out of, I'm getting a recipe oh, out of my God. chef's book. So oh, that's big time. time. Right? So here we go right here. So oh. You guys see the, the way wine is already with it. So it's already perfect. I'm eating Wait, so what's in it? What's the protein in it? The, first of all, this is very healthy. Okay. <laughs> Let y'all know. This ain't that pasta that, you know, you got to worry about with the love handles. Yeah. Right? Maybe here. I'll put oh, okay. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm but, sorry. <laughs> my wife don't tell you. I'm going to go ahead and get these onions ready. Absolutely. I'm about to, uh, uh, what am I about to do? Toss these Brussels sprouts? Is that what I'm about to do? Some olive oil? 
We don't have insight. Except for these um, onions, but it's fine. Wait, are we starting with white, or do you want to just get into the red? So this lentil pine pasta with turkey meat sauce. Um, Aish, what are your thoughts on a uh, brown turkey? Because I like brown. I you like brown what? I like brown be brown beef, like regular brown yeah. rice with the p the fatty pool of grease on top. But we I'm, use, we I'm use a lot of a Midwest thing. Like typically, like during the season, we use a lot of ground turkey. Um, but I do prefer ground beef. Yeah. 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 No. Hey, this masterpiece that I'm shit that I'm making over here. Mm, mm, mm. You don't even like onions. <laughs> right, so this, this, is all this is all about this is all about making sure that I represent what Chef has really put together for us. Okay, so next, guys, I'm about to throw some garlic in there, only half of it. All right, I'm just letting y'all know my process. Right. Yeah, you gotta tell the people what you're doing. You can't I'm over here slicing. I'm slicing. Yeah, I, we should move the camera right yeah, here. Yeah, I want to so make sure you cook it. Yeah, yeah. Bring it, bring it. Yeah. I'm going to move the camera so he, he can talk and chop. So right now, I'm in the process of slicing up these Brussels sprouts. I'm going to try to sound real uh, professional with it. I want to make sure the Brussels sprouts are nice and chopped evenly. So we <laughs> get the olive oil sopping up, you know, on. You got to do a little, that camera, little camera trick. So. Oh, Lord Jesus. I don't, I don't know if y'all, but y'all probably can smell my aroma uh, <laughs> through the, the phone. It, it, it smells so good over here. Sure. Mm. What is that? We got uh, onions and uh, Hey, so who, I got a question. Who's the real, like, okay, so who got the trademark on Chef Curry? Well, now I do. Oh, so uh, you got the trademark on Chef Curry. I'm just wondering. I had to throw the no look because they was trying to put that on me, and I ain't want none of them problems. <laughs> No, hey, listen, sir. Everybody. I'm about to pour a little whey wine into my, my ingredients. I just want y'all to know. Oh, you're right? drinking it and using it in there. Oh, I'm okay. It and using it. You know, hey, listen, I watched my parents. They ain't pour wine. They pour a little something else. But I watched my parents do this. <laughs> His parents also put American cheese on top of spaghetti. That's right. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, that's good enough, babe. Uh -huh. Baby, huh. You smell it. Okay, I smell it. Just put it on the pan and put it in the oven. Baby, baby, can you talk to Aisha about um, her magazine? Yes, talk to, talk to Aisha, tell us about your magazine. Oh, oh my God, God. stop! <laughs> yeah! <What is> it? <laughs> Let's see it. Oh, Sweet oh, Glass. Hey. That cover girl. That, that, that cover right there. I it's... should cook like this the whole time. Mmm. <laughs> You're real sexy with it. <gasps> Oh, by the way, I have preheated this oven to 425 degrees for these here Brussels sprouts. Wait. Oh. oh. You don't want mm. oh, crap. Okay. I don't know. I need to, I'm definitely going to look at those Brussels sprouts when we're done. It's, Brussels sprouts ain't easy to make. They not. We're going to find out today. <laughs> Everybody, I'm, a little, yeah. I'm about to do a little salt and pepper, a little, you know, give a little more seasoning to my, my sauce. This so what is your magazine going to gonna cover? What, what kind of things? What kind of topics? Me. What'd you say? What kind of things are your mag is your magazine going to cover? What issues? What kind of stuff? What can we look for? We're, we, I wanted it to be super inclusive. And so this first issue, we're talking all about um, sunscreen and skincare for all skin types. Because I feel like a lot of us don't know that you still actually need to wear sunscreen. And I think I've seen you talk about the fact that you always wear sunscreen. Um, yes. I, I feel like I've read that before, and it's so important because um, our community is actually more susceptible to. We don't get um, uh, we don't get skin cancer as often, but when black people do, they're more likely to fall super super ill from it. Um, yes. So people don't know that, and so we talk, we dive into that. I have my mom has a column in there where she talks about you know, just going through a transitional phase um, in her marriage and personal life and just being 57 and fabulous. And so I was really excited to have that for her because it's always been a dream of hers. And then just featuring local businesses, small businesses, um, all sorts of things. I'm just, it's honestly a dream come true and I can't, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. 
it's dope. Like nobody, nobody I know that's like in like young, younger, has their own magazine and is all hey, give about. Me book. Give me a book. Give me a book. I need the book. I need the book. Oh. See, this is how you end up with American. <laughs> Crazy. Top five hottest moms ever in life. It's so it's so ridiculous. And I'll see like crazy comments on Instagram and stuff like, how do you feel that your mother in law and your mom look better than you? I'm like, I feel great because that means I'm gonna age very well. Thank you. Y'all are fine. So, Y'all are fine. Aisha, I got a question. So uh I know like I think you started off kind of everything you blog, right? Like early on mm -hmm. you had a blog. So you started mm -hmm. everything on blog. So we we have a lot of people that's that's out here listening that, you know, they're in this space where they want to do something, they want to create something, but they don't know how to do it. How was your process of and why you started a the blog and how was your process of doing that to get to where you are now where you have an empire? Empire. Can we talk oh, about God. it? Oh god. You guys are making me sweat. <laughs> I know I I feel like when you when you have purpose and a, and a calling like things happen organically so as long as you're passionate about the steps that you're taking and what you're doing and it comes from an organic place um that the right doors are going to open for you as long as you're putting in the work i think a lot of people don't know the behind the scenes stuff that goes on and the effort that people are putting in off of instagram and the long nights and the, the office nights we, we never really show that and maybe we should start yeah. but um there's just a lot of work that goes into to everything but i think for anybody like looking to start doing something it's just do it with conviction and not letting anybody uh, stop you. It's, it's gonna be a lot of no's before you get to a yes. Right. <laughs> a lot of the no's. Talk it's about the no's. Talk about the no's. The no's are They're ruthless. Hard. They uh -huh. hurt. They hurt. But life's about resilience and how you. What's that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You like these? What is that? These are sausages, baby. Yeah. <laughs> awesome perfect sausages. <laughs> So these right here are turkey sausages right here. All right, we're keeping it healthy, y'all. We're keeping it healthy. That's you awesome. You see me, Steph? Pour the olive oil cool. in the skillet. Now I'm about to throw this turkey sausage in there. Uh, Chad, that is uh, just Chad in a not hot dog, bro. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see how my kids are hot dogs. They're not hot dogs, just I'm Chad. Done. <laughs> Says the guy that cooks American cheese on sugary spaghetti. We, we are can't keep track of the same right here? What do we got? So I just put the pan steaks on right here. They're fillets. I keep, I keep saying the wrong meat. It's Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a pan steak. It's, if we yeah. get it. The pan pan, steak. pan fillet. That's a card I'm sitting in the kitchen. You got to talk it's to your food fillet. like it's, it's got value. It you got it's, it's fillet. You're just cooking it in a pan. Hey, yo, Steph. Yes, sir. I got a question for you, man. What's good? So listen, I feel like me and you are kind of similar in this respect right here, right? I feel like we're both two guys that probably, when it's all said and done, will not get the overall respect that we probably should have should get from this game, right? How do you deal with that? For all the kids and everyone's out there listening, how do you how do you deal with that? One, while you're playing as one of the top players in the game, but maybe not get the respect that the real basketball players know you should get. I mean, it comes in ways. I think uh, the grind to get to that level, like the. The championship experiences and you know people knowing your name and and you creating that fear every time you walk in the gym that mm. they know that you're there mm. like that journey so dope because mm. every night it's like i'm proving to myself first and foremost that i the work that i put in is paying off and like it starts to build your confidence then you start winning and everybody loves you right like there's that window where it's just yeah you can do no wrong and it's cool like but it still doesn't change uh, the drive that got us there. But then afterwards, what I'm finding out, like, as soon as you have a little vulnerability or a little, you know, window for them to come in, they come oh, in a full circle. So, like, it, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it hurts. It's just more entertaining for me because, like I told somebody earlier, I'm, I'm so confident in, like, who I am. And, and that has come from the people around me 
the circle that I got that's so tight that, you know, they're not gassing me, but they keep it real. And that has allowed me to kind of take all the criticism, uh, whether you might have like a, I might have like a human like, oh man, bump them, or I'm about to go tweet something right quick. Ah, oh, nah, you know, <laughs> uh, I still have those reactions, but at the end of the day, like I know who I am. I know what I put into it. And uh, at the end of the day, the hate is always louder than the love. And then we got to change that, but, um, you know, I'm de- we just deal with it. That's that's the biggest thing. You just gotta be confident in who you are. I know it, it comes to work. You gotta prove it to yourself first. So. Yeah. Well, I think we said fear when you walk in the gym. Uh, that's my hey, right hey, there. Yeah. Hey, listen. So when when did you see that shift of that fear, Steph? Because I remember, you know, when you first came in. When did you see that shift happen? You said the what? When did you see that shift in like in guys? The, the look in people's eyes when you came off the court was different. When they got like, scared. When they got when they, when that fear came in. What, what time was that in the NBA? I was like, what game was it? Did you remember the game? Y'all it was New York. It was in New York. It was in New York in 2013. Oh, 2014. Yeah. That was 20, yeah. No, that was 2013. That was 2013. That was New York. Wait, that how many times? That, that was when I knew. 54? What's that, like 54? We're 54 and we lost, but. <laughs> Where can I find one? I remember watching that game. I remember watching that game like. In the, in the you uh, miss every day. We in trouble. Yeah, like I was playing 48 minutes a night that because we had injuries and Coach Jackson was we were trying to prove like that we were about about that life on the on the biggest stages. So I was playing 48 minutes just just going out there and hooping. But that was night. I first I felt like I was I was as close to being like the perfect offensive player. Just like in in that moment, I was like, I can do whatever I want to on the floor, like anything. I can get to the cup. I ain't gonna dunk on nobody, but I can float it. <laughs> I can shoot it. I can make the right pass. Um, and that was as close as I, I I felt to it. But from there, it was just an avalanche of confidence. And to all the young guys, like coming in now, the like the journey to get to that point, you gonna have so many ups and downs. And like the best players are the ones that can stay even keel through it all. Like they can find a way to not feel themselves when they score 50 and not think they uh, have lost at all when they score eight. Like they got to be somewhere in the middle where every night, you know, they just, they just, they just play. And uh, from that point, it was all about uh, establishing confidence. And uh, you can you can talk to yourself and you can kind of speak it into existence, but until you actually feel it, it's hard, it's hard to explain. You know? yeah. well, what I'm, I'm interested, like, what was that for you? Just, that moment, um, was it like that first playoff run? Was it, you know, the first finals appearance? Like, was it, what was that for you where you, you knew, like, I'm that guy? You know what? For me, it was more so than like a performance. It was, it was matchups. So when I first got in the league stuff, like, I couldn't, I couldn't throw a rock in the ocean. Like, I couldn't. Yeah. So everyone backed all the way to the rim. <laughs> and then I remember, the game when I when I first remember when we were playing the Lakers, we were playing against Cole. And I remember when Cole first picked me up 94 feet. Because at first, he would pick me up underneath the three-point line, go under two screens, and let me shoot. So the moment where guys started picking me up 94 feet because they didn't want me to touch the basketball, right. that's the moment I was like, oh, okay, I got the respect now. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't that I couldn't shoot. It's just the fact that, like, I remember, I remember being at the three-point line a lot, and I'm like, I'm not a three-point shooter. Why are guys guarding me, denying me at the three-point line? Let me shoot it. But the thing is, they didn't want me to touch the ball because when I touched the ball, either I was going to score or I was going to create the opportunity for one of my teammates. So that's when I knew that the respect was there. And like like you said, when you get to the point, man, where you like, I can do like I can do anything on this floor, it's, it's no stopping no you. Stopping. Man. Once you get up here, it's no stopping. No stopping. Like that was – CP was my guy because that was like my – my road dog from coming out and in, in, uh, out of college, like he took me under his wing from the jump, and I'm forever grateful for that because yeah, he showed me how to work. He showed me like the the pressure on being you know elite every night, and like I got to chase that for like three four years until we finally met up in the playoff series and they beat us, and like I'm still like dang I, I was right there almost got him. So like um, there's always like that. I, I I love that part about the NBA and like the fraternity. Like there's respect. Even though it's competition and it's 
it could be bad blood, or bad blood at times, and just the ebbs and flows of what that is on the court. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm sure, like once it's all said and done, you're gonna look back and appreciate those those people that you can kind of put a face to, you know, the success, which mm-hmm. is dope. We wanted Six Flags. Yeah, it was family. We went to Six Flags before the draft, and <laughs> we were pinching each other. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, North Carolina? Oh. oh, we went there. <laughs> While I was giving my answer last, Kevin Hart, Keith. Aisha was right. <laughs> she, wrote, she wrote that on the paper. Flip the state. <laughs> he wasn't listening to me. <laughs> she had to write it to me. Wait, can we put them on Bluetooth though so we can hear it? You saw it, or is it gonna reverb? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work, but it's fine. Yo, Aisha, um, have you guys received worse advice than the one that the advice that I gave um, at Mia? At, 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 at Wait, I'm done. I'm done. Might be the best advice you guys have probably. It's why you guys are where you are. Cause I, Wait, I can't remember no verbatim. You want to tell the people what I told you? Do, do, do you remember verbatim what it was? <laughs> yes. The spirit, the spirit of it was. The, the spirit. Same. The spirit of it was. <laughs> in your relationship, just make sure you got each other. You know? Wait, what? Yeah, I was like, um, that, maybe that came a little later. Thanks, Chad. Uh, I was trying to help. I... <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that sounds like actual good advice. I, I didn't give you guys that. that it, it was, it was interesting. Hold on. Oh, nice, nice. Go to pot. Nice. Y'all see it? Ah. Aroma. Okay, okay. Okay. Are you? Wait, are you guys? Work. You guys are in LA right now, or in LA? Yeah, yeah. We moved from Miami, That's so we're right. here full time now. That is right. Yeah. Nice. Hmm? They moved there full time now. Right. Yep. We're trying to snatch your neighbor. To I know. Down here. Come I feel like they're, they're, they're. I feel like it's gonna happen. You want to see? All right, so hold on one second. Sorry to interrupt. B Way, you said you want to see my work, so I got about a I got about a minute left on the uh, on the the fillets. And we like I, a good medium rare. Then I moved over here and I'm looking at uh, these scallops. I just generously salted these fine scallops right here. I got some ghee in this pan that's melting. That's gonna be the little the coating on the pan or the. Tell them why you're using ghee. I'm using ghee because you gotta explain to the people what ghee is. The milk, <laughs> uh, the milk solids are removed, so it's not like butter. It's a little different. I, had to, I wrote that one down. It's right. clarified butter, so it won't burn. We'll see how it. Hey, we'll see go. how it works. Hey, uh, hey, for all the men out there that's watching this, y'all see how my wife get excited every time uh, Steph talk about what he cooking. How about you cheer me on the same way? I need a little. Up over here. And this is why I gave you guys bad advice all those years ago, and you shouldn't have listened. I'm glad you didn't listen to me. <laughs> all right, Okay, Bree. Okay, Bree. Okay, Bree. Okay, it's, it's our job tonight to drink the wine. And we're doing a great job at that. Meat check. all we need to do. Meat check. This is just like in the arena. I'm drinking. He's doing his thing. Well, it's getting serious over there. When you get real close to the stove, you got to look at it real. It's getting serious. <laughs> <laughs> I had to turn it down. <laughs> hey. Don't worry. I just got my steak uh, rejected. It ain't ready yet. I was about to take it out. I was just about to take it out. She oh, said, no. Nah, hey, Steph, you ain't a real. Listen, you got to do the taste test. We're tasting the food on camera. Really, let me see. Okay, this, is, this is my sauce. This is we my sauce. Properly, properly, uh, yeah, we didn't cheer. We didn't properly do this no. right. Oh, yeah. y'all sending y'all right. way to the fam. Appreciate it. <laughs> That's it. Yes, sir. Always. Always. Much love.
I gotta add a little bit more salt in my uh, sauce. It Tasting as you go. That's the that's a major key. Which salt do you use? Yep. Yep. All right. Wait, watch your legs. Big salt. We got big salt. We got so right big here. Salt. Uh. <clears throat> Did you use I've been cutting the brush. I've been I've been cooking the they Brussels sprouts for about 15 minutes now, and uh, for the last five minutes, I'm gonna add a little. Uh, I wrote it down. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a little uh, maple syrup with some liquid. What is oh, that word? Aminos. Some liquid aminos. It's a soy. It's it's the soy sauce. Okay. It's a little, just a little, little sauce. Oh, you can't see it, but yeah, I'm gonna just drizzle those over top of the. Uh, Oh, is that a drizzle? Is it a drizzle? You're letting the heat out the oven. You got to do it fast now. Look at that. All right. Okay. You want to add some more of these um, seasonings there? You know I like it, right? It's an all-praise Mario Thomas. I couldn't do it. I just did him order me around. I'm sweating. Good gracious. I know. I was, I, How y'all keeping yourselves entertained, yeah, yeah. like, with the family, like, game nights? I've seen some of the videos. I know y'all have fun. I just want to hear from y'all, like, what's, what's, the, what's the philosophy on how to have fun at the Dwayne Wade, at the Wade house? Um, so I think we, uh, <laughs> we did too much too soon. I, I, you tapped that <laughs> idea. <laughs> so we started off strong, man. Like, Every night we were we were paying together. We would play like different kind of like heads up together, different card games together. I um, mean, we did everything. We played basketball games together. And about two weeks in, we were looking so, at each other uh, like, "Anybody got anything else? Oh, what's next?" <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the, the thing is, man, the joy of having a seventeen-year-old, uh, seventeen-one-year-old in the house. She's every day. She's giving us Absolutely. something. She's comedy. Having a Greek theme in the house, um, Dahlia having a 12 year old in the house, that's a whole different kind of beat. So, our kids, you wasn't entertained enough. Man. Yeah. So, um, we ain't over here doing eyes closed, Ruby Cube type thing. Like, I, I'm working on the eyes like, closed. Yeah. I got, I got, I got all eyes. the algorithms up here. I'm, I'm right there on the uh, being able to do it with my eyes closed. Give me about another week. All right, what kind of shows y'all watching? There you go. I know, I know, yeah, I know we all have Netflix and Amazon Prime. Let's talk about that. So we both, I know we, we all got a production company, so let's talk about the shows you guys watch. You said let's talk about what, my part? Oh. What shows y'all watch? We are the worst when it comes to uh, committing to one it's show. It's so bad. It's so bad. Like, we'll, it's we're so floating bad. around, we little butterflies floating around. Like, oh, 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 new show, new show. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I, I heard about, about that. One. Oh yes, that's on the list. So I've been, oh my, I've been trying oh, to get him so to start. Things, we haven't finished what we started already. I'm like, but we can multitask. It's fine. I almost want to just start watching it on my own. Like, I, we like there's certain yeah. shows we commit oh, to watching honey, together. No, no. One of us watching without the Put other. Put the scallops back in his hands. Uh -oh. Squeeze the lemon. Yeah. Wait. So, what kind of things are you guys trying to um to create so, like, with the production companies and stuff? So, what kind, of um, what, what kind of content are we trying to create within our production oh, companies? Yeah, yeah. So, I actually, so I actually 
have a have a new production company that I haven't quite announced yet. I'm sure you could guess the name though. But uh, <laughs> but uh, my pillars are food, family, faith, and female empowerment. So like they fall in those four F's. I'm usually like ready to wrap my arms around it. <laughs> So, and then Stephanie, I'll let you talk to yours. That's oh, so wait, so we, so we have an exclusive. We have you an exclusive what? here on the wind down. That you, <laughs> we have an exclusive yeah, yeah, here pretty on the much. What is it? Aisha's production company. Oh, you just broke that? Oh, wait, and now you're frozen. You're frozen. Oh, no. You're gonna go. He's gonna come back? Uh-oh. Oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah, you literally broke the internet. Here we go. Talk to me. No, no, no not yet. Not yet. Wait, you want to show me your pasta? Or you should... I got, I got, I got to still do my pasta. Put my pasta in. I got to put my pasta in. I got to still do my pasta. Yeah. Cause I'm, I have to be gluten free, dairy free. Oh wait, wait, no sound. No sound. Oh. Sound is in and out. Uh oh. No sound from both sides, or no sound from you guys' side? It's like, no sound, help them. Oh, we can't hear the curries. You might have to go up. Oh, we gotta, we get, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. make sure we get them back in. Okay, let's see. Gotta get him back in. Can y'all, uh, okay, would y'all hear us loud and clear? Yeah, just, I think it's just the curries. We might've got, oh, we got our Wi-Fi type. Talk to me nice. Hey, listen, once again, everybody out there, it is Friday evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mia. It is Friday evening, and you guys, it's all about drinking tonight, man. So everybody, listen, don't be shy. Let's drink wine. It's not going to stop when this end. We're going to continue to drink. Let's enjoy our Friday going into our Saturday now. All right, so everybody, tell me what you guys are drinking. Tell everybody what y'all drinking out there. Uh-oh. Oh, oh there, there's okay. There we go. Wait, hold on. You guys want that brie on? Hey. You got hear me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> 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 you hear the curtains over there? Everybody thumbs up. Hey, 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 watch that. Hey! I ain't talking about something. Get my Teddy Riley going on, man. Now, what happened to my scallops? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what happened to them scallops uh, during the break? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we almost there. We're there. Yo, We're there. Yo. All, All right, right, so, so look. <laughs> Uh, I got another question for you. We're similar, yeah. while we're we're similar in this, mm -hmm. talk about like your your mindset at the time when you signed with Under Armour because at the oh. time it wasn't obviously a popular choice. I'm similar to that sign with Lee that it wasn't a popular choice. But talk about that and all the kids out there to understand that it's way more than one or two. That's gonna be a great question because. Uh, a dead one. Coming into the league, I've uh, been with the other guys for the longest. And <laughs> the, at the time, it was an opportunity to be entrepreneurial in mindset and to have a seat at the table of actually growing like a meaningful business. And at the time, UA didn't really have, uh, we had like Brandon Jennings, DeAndre Jordan, Kent Bazemore, small roster, but not really a substantial business by any stretch. And never had a true signature athlete um, that was actually. Um, you know, being able to actually, you know, infuse some, some life into the business and some, some juice and energy. And so 
uh, I, I love that that opportunity um, to do something that had, was going to be hard work. It was going to be on my shoulders to go out and perform, obviously, um, and kind of carry the weight of that. And I, I've loved every minute of it. It's been a lot of ups and downs. It's been a lot of crazy learning lessons. I've had some some dud shoes. I've had some fire shoes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like was, I, I embrace it all. So, uh, you know, whenever basketball is back, like, um, continue that effort. And you always got to evolve, right? Like, that's the biggest thing about our careers. Like, we are who we are, and we come to the to the gym with the same mentality. We're trying to win, uh, but it's all kind of packaged differently every year, depending on you know what your situation is, and you can embrace that. And so I've I love helping telling that story every single year, and then allowing you know myself and, and you and the partnership that we had to to uh, bring that to life. So um, it, it was a good decision at the time, not just business wise, but it was it was a, a great learning experience. It's been for the last seven years. So same thing I know for you. Yeah, definitely, man. I think, I mean, you, you hit all the points for me, man. I was, I was in a different, I think I was in a different place. I was 30 years old and I was looking at the game differently. I was looking at, you know, my overall life differently at the time. And we always hear this word, right? As athletes, they throw around this word legacy all the yep. time. And I ain't even lied to you for a long time. I, I didn't even know what legacy was. I took a stab at what I thought it was, but I really didn't know what it was. So when I set out and thought about, you know, kind of this move that I was, um, the time, the, the space I was in as a 30-year-old athlete in the NBA, um, you know, the conversations that you have with other brands is they, they want to go like two, three years because, you know, athletes, once they get to 30, they start. Yeah, they running, know. Right? <laughs> so they throw you to the side. The now. And who's next? Yeah, who's next? And, and you know what? And I respect it's business. So you got to yeah. respect that and you can't be sensitive to it, right, from that standpoint. So. I think I just set out to look and see what was best for my family and myself. And for us, it was about, you know, we, we both was in this process of building stuff, something and really having real equity and ownership in it. And, you know, we always talked about giving others a platform or, or, bring, or raising others up with you or bringing others up alone. So for me, when I got an opportunity to sign with Lee Ning and have my own brand with them, my whole mission was to build something so great that, you know, it's, a, it's another kid in the inner city of Chicago right now that may be five years old or seven years old that one day can see what I did and understand that his, his power, understand his reach and understand that, um, you know, the world is bigger than what you just see out your front window and your back window. Absolutely. So um, I, I, was, it was, I was a little nervous at first because it was, it was kind of uncharted territories for myself, but it ended up being one of the, the smartest decisions business-wise that I've made so far um, of putting my family in a situation of legacy and a lifelong yeah, opportunity to grow and build something. Absolutely, yeah. man. It takes a lot to take, to take that risk, right? There is risk associated with it and, you know, the security of the big brands and all that, like they, they're doing, they do amazing stuff and, and you can't argue like at, at one point in time and all, both of our careers have made sense, but you get to a certain point, you can you can pivot and and, and take that ownership and equity. That's what everybody should be looking for. Those type of opportunities. Like, Y'all talk about talk it. about from a business standpoint the business of basketball, and and deal structure, and and thinking outside the box in terms of, of um, your business and how you yeah. do it yourself and betting on yourself and what that that looks like and what it can look like. Um, I know I was watching that, uh, that, that the, the doc about MJ and, um, yep. you know, Scotty's, that Scotty's deal. And, and I, was, I, could, I literally couldn't sleep after watching it because I saw myself. I saw all the terrible decisions I made um, out of necessity in the moment and not thinking bigger picture. Yeah. And because best believe, even when you can't see your greatness, somebody else can and they're banking on you not having that self-esteem and having that self-worth. Um, so talk about what is, what is one great piece of business advice that you guys have gotten um, that can influence this, this next generation? As Dee says, you know, there's a five or a seven-year-old <laughs> um, yeah. out there on this IG live. Uh, what can you I'm say? I'm just talking about their periods. Parents are here. I think, uh, I mean, that's a great point. And, everybody's story is different you got to realize that so like being real with yourself and where you're at uh knowing 
like you talk about Scotty's example, like there were a lot of life circumstances that not, I don't think they talked about it a lot, but there were a lot of things in his past that, uh, you know, came through with the decision that he made. And that's all well and good. And like you say, like you would hope and wish that he could have had a, 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 made a different decision, looked out for himself a little bit or bet on himself and got a better return. But the biggest thing I, that somebody told me was obviously be aware, be, be smart, be educated. Uh, but once you make a decision, like you got to live with it and go and make the most of it. And so um, it's always easy to count other people's money to Woo! look across the, the line and say, exactly. What's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? What's in your wallet? <laughs> I'd like to know. <laughs> and, and figure out exactly, you know, you can always say you could be better, but um, you know, you want to be as educated as you can when you're making decisions like that, look out, and realize your leverage and your your worth in those type of conversations, um, and do your best to protect yourself through that. And that was like even for my like my first contract, and it's kind of been talked about too, like underpaid for three years, whatever it was. Like I told myself when I put that ink on the paper, like and especially in this industry, in this business, you can't ever look across and just compare yourself and think that that's the only thing that matters. Um, at the end of the day, if I can take care of my family and whatnot, like. I mean, it sounds good, but that was really my thought process. Like, I'm, I'm gonna be all right. Let's figure, let's figure this out. And so, for you know, anybody who's, who's watching, you're gonna have a lot of different decisions to make, and you're gonna be trying to compare yourself to the next person beside you, or look at models like D Wade was talking about. Uh, you have to be real with yourself and know where you're at. Um, have big dreams and visions, um, but have make sure people that are around you are telling you to you straight too. I, I threw a lot out there just now, but that was no, that was perfect. Yeah, you know, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do, oh God, what do I have? I have a whole freaking line. Good. I got a whole line. I got a whole lot to say. But I can't. Um I would say Liz, girl, we, we talk no about this. I would say that no matter how nice you are in your personal life and the way that you speak to people and you carry yourself and you go about things, when it comes to business, you, a part of you when it comes to the fundamentals has to be regimented and a little bit ruthless um, or else people are going to take advantage of you, bottom line. So like you can't, you can't have the same, you, you, you got to step outside of yourself a little bit and really uh, read between the lines um, when it comes to your business. And ruthless, yeah, ruthless doesn't mean being an asshole. It just means standing up for yourself at the end of the day. Uh, and then I would say um, there was you know a what, what, what feels like ruthless, What feels like ruthless to someone else is you creating boundaries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, it's okay to actually is. value yourself as well. Like, it's fine. It's not, you're not arrogant. You're valuing yourself. And you're I not brand that's new. Okay. It's just called boundaries. Exactly. And for me, I think at a certain point, I was so gracious and had so much gratitude and thanks for everything that I was doing. And I, I didn't want to seem, you know, so over the top and like I had an air to myself. So I was the yes woman. And it took a lot of time many years for me to realize like it's it's fine to say no and i'm going to start saying no a lot and it's going to become my favorite word <laughs> so <laughs> well they want you to be grateful for crumbs right right yeah uh, Woo! There you go. finish Woo! that looks great he's playing out there on top of the stage Hey, Steph, come and look at this masterpiece right here. There is no american Yum. i love that we no, finished no at the sugar. same time Come on, come on. Wait, wait. That looks great. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Mm, you want more? Okay. You let it fall off to the uh, okay. Side. All right. You let it fall off to the side. Oh, oh my oh. goodness. Okay, you played it. Oh, you <laughs> oh, the, the, sky was, the sky was about to fall off the plate, but you know we got the we got the fillet. We got the. Hold on, hold on. Let me do it. My baby over here sweating like beans. Mm. And listen. Monster. I ain't sweating this much since uh, I ran around out here and that game went on y'all, Steph. Yo! Yo! <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? Hey, I'm standing out here at the rim like this, like. Hey, did you think you had a chance? 
I was I was right underneath the basket. I saw it online the whole time. That's why I didn't move. And I had the nerve to catch it out the rim. <laughs> <laughs> I should have ran over and handed it to you. <laughs> Yo, how funny would that have been if you were the Ram chasing me to give me the ball? <laughs> yeah, I hear it too, man. Get your ass out of here, man. This is so dope. Go ahead, go ahead. Give me. I'm going to sprinkle it. There you go, E40. You know, everybody. Oh, okay. baby. <laughs> What's that? Oh, babe. What'd you put a little. A little so, look, we got a little time on that. A little cheese, you know. It's so hot. <laughs> Listen, it's for the That's people. That's like a high arcing shot. Okay. It's for the people. <laughs> <laughs> the people don't have to clean this up. For the people. Yeah. Ooh, are we eating right now too? We're eating we right now. We gotta taste it. Yeah, everybody, man. And he knows I'm. I can't do dairy, but he put cheese on it. He put cheese on it, but ah! it's okay. Just well, a little bit. Give him a, you're just gonna and give I'm him gonna some presents. You're gonna so give him a nice. gift tonight. <laughs> My little bit of farts is gonna be oh, super romantic. Wait, hold on, hold on. Take a drink. Of, take a drink of all wine. Can we back it up? Back it up a little bit. Wait, you're done, right? So, yeah, I got, hold on. I got, uh, tilt it? I'm going to do this right here, so. Oh, I'm excited. So, they can each, everyone can take our first bites. Here we go. Right here. Go right here. A nice medium steak. That's delicious. You want to go back? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Mm. I can smell it. I don't even need to taste it. I know it. You did a great job. Put it this way. I don't know if I've ever been more defeated in my life because I actually was nervous. I got to the end, I played the food, but I've been tasting her food for so long. I know what that tastes like. <laughs> I was hoping in my mind that that was what it going to taste like. <laughs> really good. Right. You did a great job. I did. I did all right, though. I I'm just, just know what you're though. You set the bar so high. Uh, can we get on your cooking show? Can we come on and, like, you know what I'm saying? Bye bye. What's up? Heck yeah. Mm. <laughs> Mm hmm. This is almost clear taco. This is good. Don't give it a nine. Hey, look, look, Steph. I got that's the question I have for you too. What did you get on your last night? Wedding. 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 I feel like Whitney Houston in concert. Right now. What did you give Aaron Gordon on that last dunk? <sighs> hey. This is a great time to not tell the truth, Steph. It's a great time to tell it. But everyone has their own opinions. What was your opinion on the last dunk that uh, Aaron Gordon did? Aaron, Aaron should have won, man. Wait, but from that dunk or period? He, he not that dunk was not his best, but he should have won. He had the better body of work, so I understand the dilemma. I just know Aaron Gordon should have won. Right, but we talking about the last dunk. Which was game with you nine? <laughs> game with ten? Because up until that point. I gave Eric Gordon a ten every time. I would, honestly, I would have been biased, and I and I would have said, "Yeah, he got a 10. <laughs> I got to make sure he wins. <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. So listen, I was biased as well. Uh, yeah, I, it's okay. Because I gave Derek Jones Jr. a nine on his first dunk when he jumped over Bam. He right. Took, I'm all about it. if you're gonna do it, you gotta clear him. That's right. He you tell you got a little clear him, so I gave him a nine. Neck. Yeah. That's a tough. Hey, the NBA called me when I'm uh when I'm retired and asked me to do a dunk contest. And you, your your face gonna pop in my head. Like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Yo, you know what I mean? Listen, I get so many people that comment on everything I do and be like, I give that a nine out of ten. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, do y'all know that a nine out of ten? I'll take that any day. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll take it any day of the week, man. <laughs> no, that's funny. Cause you got nine out of ten. I got look at Curry, man. So inspirational. We we just we just doing it out here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, right. babe, was it really good? It really is good, babe. All right, listen, hey, yo. So I don't know if you're gonna say it or if you believe it, but what do you feel about the conversation that people say that you changed the game of basketball? Like, it's only a few different people that come along and you like, that guy right there changed the way that we look at basketball. How do you feel when people say that about you? Uh, at first, I was uncomfortable with it because, like, you know, anytime you get that, like, outlandish praise for doing something legendary and you're still in the, in the fight, like, it doesn't do anything for me. So I kind of, like, kept it at bay. Nah, I kind of sit and think about it, and you know, eleven years in, looking at some of the guys that are coming into the league and how the game has, has changed, 
um, in terms of, you know, he just how many threes are going up and, and that being – uh, a part of, you know, anybody who comes and sets foot on the floor, they, on, on the NBA floor now should have that as, in their arsenal in some way, shape, or form. Like, it, right. it is pretty flattering. And, um, you know, I appreciate the fact that I didn't come in trying to do it. Like, I literally was just being myself. And whatever I saw, whatever I worked on, I was going to go out there and do. Um, and just having the, uh, I'll call it the stubbornness to think that I could do it. You know what I mean? Like, it was... It was just, I feel like you were just excited to I be there. Just, yeah, I, I had to play. <laughs> and so, like, um, yeah, it's just wild to think about, man. I embrace it. I love it. I know that it, I have changed it in terms of, um, you know, how younger kids now see the game of basketball and what they work on at a younger age. Um, we'll see how, how it continues to play out with the, the new talent that's coming into the league. So, Yo, you know what I love? I love when they show um, – Steve Kerr, when you're taking a shot. Oh, yeah. I love when he, like, no, he looking at it like, no, and then you make it, he like. We, we were still getting to know each other at that point. That was, like, three months <laughs> in. <laughs> I love like, that, man. I, can't, I love it. Uh, yeah. uh, Even so five years later, he's still making that look. So, when you got, when you got, when you first came in the league, um, for real, you know, Warrior fans, you know, who were there with the Run TMC era, um, I know when I first saw um, Timmy Hardaway walking, just randomly, I randomly walk, ran into Tim Hardaway in the Miami arena, and I, I, I lost my shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Red Team, oh, my God, you know, Chris Mullen. It was the best thing ever. Um, the next time I went to go see the Warriors was with you guys and your OGs, um, BD and um, Maddie Barnes. Yep. And, Stack uh, Jack. You're, you're my UCLA Bruin guy, my little yep. girls. But talk to us about your, the importance of OGs. Facts. I mean, it's everything because I know, I guess kind of like with a question you just asked about changing the game, but like I know how many people have laid the foundation for what the NBA is now and the, the ability for us to make a, the livings that we do now is because of the work that they put in and advancing the game and keeping basketball front and center and culture. And um, in, in that respect, so like, I got nothing but uh, respect and just praise for anybody. The fraternity is it's not that big if you think about it in terms of the grand scheme of life and how many people put on the NBA jersey and, and made a name for themselves. So the craziest thing is now is like I know a lot of them are dealing with like the wave of social media and anything they say uh, and how they judge and view today's game is going to catch headlines. And sometimes it, they just be wilding out just, just talking. But for the most part, like, a lot of them respect how we've carried the torch. And um, I hope to do that. I know a lot of guys in the league today can't wait to be in that position where they look back at the work that they did and say, oh, these kids out here, you know, because of what we did in our careers, they get to hoop and take care of their families and um, grow the game. So it's, it's pretty crazy to think about. That was one of my biggest fears is that when D signed off for his TNT show that he would become an old hater. <laughs> hey, that's real talk though, because you gotta be truthful and honest. You gotta I, I give an opinion. That. Yeah, I was I was actually afraid of that. Like I, I never wanted to leave the game and become that guy that talks about you know all the players that's playing the game. You know what I mean? And especially yeah. the further and further away you get from the game, the more and more the game changes, and it's yeah. different than what you remember. And we all have this mentality that oh, I would have did it this way, or I wouldn't have done that. So I never wanted to, like, I, I don't want to, not never, because, it, you know, this is going to go on for a while. I don't want to lose myself in the process of being on TV and talking about the game of basketball I love. You know what I mean? Um, you, I still want to be able to have sex with him. <laughs> There's nothing more unsexy than an old-ass hair. No, that's <laughs> no sex. They just got a different ah, swag about him. Uh, <laughs> speaking of sex, Woo! can we talk about that photo that you guys posted yeah. on the viral? Like, the, the, the sexy polo, you know, when you was holding her up like this. Let's just put it Let's this way, bro. That. What, we'll what talk, inspired that? We'll talk it was, about having faith and moving the culture forward and that you can, and those two things can live together. Talk about it. I talk like about it. it. Yes, talk absolutely. About it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Absolutely. Actually, I would love to talk about that because <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like that is the biggest misconception with us being Christians is that we can't have fun in our marriage and that we're not feisty and lovely <laughs> and 
all of the ludicrous songs. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's annoying. And it's not the case at all. Um, for us, our faith is about our personal relationship with God and making sure that we love everybody around us without judgment. It's not, it's, that is not our job. We're never trying to pass judgment on people. We're just trying to love the Lord, get it popping, and drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> so it's possible to love Jesus and get it popping too. Yes. All I was doing was trying to get hand rehab in on All Star Weekend. That's what I was just trying to. <laughs> oh, I was 